We're installing Real Club kits for Football Manager 2024. Now, this guide is for the full version of FM24 on either Windows or Mac through Steam, Epic or Game Pass. If you're playing FM Console, Touch or Mobile, then this is not the guide for you. If you find this guide easy to follow and need help installing other essentials, check out our How to Install Essentials playlist for more videos. Now, this is a simple process, as we say every time, but it may take a little time if you're starting from scratch. Uh, and first things first, I'm going to do something very strange and advocate installing three different styles of kits. And I'm going to go through them all in this video. So down in the description will be links to the Standard Kits Mega Pack the FC12 2D style kits and the 3D kits style as well. Uh, you'll need all of these pages open on the Sort It Out SI website in order to follow along step by step with this video. Uh, there's also a folder location that you'll need to have open as well that will look like the one I've got on screen right now. Uh, and if you don't have well, obviously, you don't have to use the same style of kits, so they might be slightly different, the install methods, but the location, the general method is the same. Um, the main difference with kit packs compared to the club logo packs or face packs, or generally speaking, is that kit packs cover individual leagues rather than the mega packs that cover pretty much all of the game, with the exception of the standard kicks uh, magic mega pack, which we'll be looking at as well today. Now, it's important to note uh, that you don't have to be a premium member on the Sort It Out SI website to get access to downloads. You can have access through a regular free account with some of the kit packs, just like some of the logo packs, you might be sent to a third party in order to download them, but don't worry about that. Uh, before we go into downloading any of the kit packs, I recommend doing some prep work within your graphics folder first because if you want to download a lot of kit packs, as we've mentioned, most of them come in the form of just one league. It can easily get quite messy and difficult to navigate if you don't do the prep work in advance. Obviously, skip that step if you don't want to. Uh, now, the location we're going to need will be slightly different depending on whether you're on Windows or Mac. But we're going to cover both. Don't worry. First, with Windows, head to My Documents, then Sports Interactive and Football Manager 2024. This is the main user data folder for the game and houses everything from graphics to skins, tactics, save games, edit data files, everything you can think of generally goes in this folder. By default, it's in the same location, whether you've installed via Steam, Epic or Game Pass. I'll show you in a second how to find that location if it's not. Now on Mac, uh, the folder you need is usually hidden by default. Um, so you need to open the finder, click go from the menu bar uh, and go to the library, go library, application support, Sports Interactive, Football Manager 2024, or copy and paste the location from the description of this video. Once you've found that main folder, pretty much everything else is the same, depending on, uh, regardless of whether you are Windows or Mac. So just follow along from here. Um, if you can't find that path, as we've mentioned, you can double check in game that it hasn't been changed from the default or if it's defaulted to somewhere else. So what you need to do is you need to go to Preferences, click on Advanced Options, scroll down to General and a setting called Location. Uh, the file path shown here is the user data folder. So you don't need, well, you do, sorry, you need to have booted up the game once in order to create the folders because if you haven't, they won't exist. So but by going to look where they are, you'll have booted the game up. So it's all good from there. Okay, now you've found that folder, we're going to go through the same instructions for Windows and Mac. It's all the same. Uh, we need to find the graphics folder within the main user data folder. If it doesn't already exist, simply create a new folder called graphics. Uh, the first thing I do within that graphics folder is create a kits subfolder. Uh, and then within there, I create three subfolders here as well. So one for the standard kits, uh, one for the 2D kits in the FC12 style, and one for the 3D kits. If you're going to follow along exactly, it'll look like this. Uh, but within the 2D and the 3D folders, I recommend creating this structure, which I'm going to show you, just to keep things a lot more organized and easy to follow. So I create a folder for each continent, so Europe, Asia, etc. Uh, and within each of those continental folders, I'll create a new folder for each country and then move all of the kits that I've downloaded for that country into that subfolder. So within Europe, for example, I'll create England, Italy, Spain, France, Germany, etc. So all of those subfolders exist to put all the leagues that I download into. And then also I'll create a national teams folder as well, which is outside of the continents, just to keep them separate because it's easier that way for me. Uh, that's my recommendation, uh, recommended setup. I do that for both 2D and 3D kits. 
but that's just how I keep things organized. If you've got other methods, let me know in the comments as it's great to see how different people organize their graphics folders and we can all learn something just by having a look at what other people do. Now that we've got these kits folders set up, it's time to download a few kits to start filling out the game basically. So I first recommend downloading the standard kits mega pack. As we've mentioned, this is really the only mega pack for kits for Football Manager. It covers loads of different leagues and areas to fill out the kits in the default style so they match what's already in the game so it all looks nice and pretty. Um, it basically sees regular updates throughout the year. It's already had one update since the launch of the uh, early access uh, and then basically what I do is then download other 2D kit styles to differentiate the leagues that I'm managing in or regularly facing in continental competitions. Um, so if you're following along, once you've downloaded the standard kits, I'm going to go and download some FC12 kits as well. Um, if you've got a premium membership, it'll be a direct download. If you haven't, if you're just a regular member, uh, you'll be redirected to our friends over at FM Slovakia, which is a great, easy to navigate website, so you can download all of the leagues you want from their website. Uh, when you are using their website, the FM Slovakia website, you'll be presented with either using a Dropbox download link or a Mediafire version. The end download is the same, so choose whichever method you prefer, basically. Uh, download as many or as few packs as you wish. Uh, and at this point, I'll download a few more, but then go on to the 3D kits section as well. Go through a similar process. The 3D kits are less frequent in updates, to be honest, because it's probably harder to do. I'm not an expert. Um, but the packs generally can be grouped by either league or country. So the England pack is the first top six levels of England all in one pack. Um, but Spain, for example, is just La Liga. It all really depends on what's available for each style. So have a look around and download what you think looks good. Um, when you get to install them in a second, it's the same method. So just download what you want. Uh, similarly, basically just look around. Uh, it's important to note that the selection of kits available is always being added to throughout the year by the great artists who dedicate their time to create graphics for Football Manager. Okay, now the downloads have finished. You should have a bunch of RAR or zip files, or both, that look something like this, depending on what you've downloaded. I've only downloaded a few leagues, just to give you a bit of a flavour. Uh, but now you need to extract these files, and I'm just going to do them all as one big bulk, uh, using whatever extraction software you like. I use 7-Zip, loads of others available, doesn't matter. It gets the extraction done, so each pack should be nice and quick. Uh, but if you've downloaded a lot, you might want to take a break and watch some of our league guides are here on the Sort It Out SI league, uh, YouTube channel. There's a playlist of them and they'll give you all great ideas for new saves in different countries and different nations around the game. So check them out whilst you are downloading things and having a little break from installing all your graphics. Now, depending on how you've structured your folders earlier, that'll dictate what you do from now. But generally, I start with a standard kits mega pack as I've done in the downloads. So I'm just going to move that into its own subfolder. So they're all just booked in this one graphics folder here. I'm going to put them in the standard kits subfolder. Um, so it's important to note as well by having multiple subfolders here that the game reads things in alphabetical order and won't overwrite things with later files. So if you've got a kit assigned in folder 1, for example, the game won't assign it a second time with the kit from folder 2. So if you want whichever ones you have a preference for, whether it's the FD12 or the standard kits, put them in the right order in the folders just to basically if it's not the way you want it change the names around a little bit that's my suggestion um, but that's what I, I do here so I put the standard kits in the standard kits folder uh, and go through basically putting the FC 12 style kits and the 3d kits in the correct nation folder and create if it's not if it's not there uh, and just make sure that basically each folder with kits in also contains that config file that we always mention because that's the very important one because you don't have a config file that tells the game where to look for the images and where to put them, they won't work. Um, you need to make sure that you don't try and install two separate leagues or file or folders in one folder and overwrite a config file because only then the files that are in the config will work and all the other ones will just sit there and the game won't know what to do with them. Um, it's simple really, make sure that you just keep everything in its own little folder so it doesn't conflict with each other. Um, there you go, so without doing that, things might not show up in game. Uh, so once all those files are finished moving across into the right folders, and we're pretty much good to go. So there's one small caveat with 3D kits as well, so you might have noticed as we were installing them, or as you've installed them as well, that some 3D kit packs, or most of them, come with a color fix file. Uh, this should be an FMF file, and I believe the standard kits mega pack will come with one as well once we get out of early access. 
uh, because this step is only available after early access. So once the full game has been uh, made available. Uh, this is a file that changes the default color of kits in the databases and their associated text in game. So they line up with the correct, in, the correct kits in the pack. Uh, they're not mandatory to get the kits to work, but they do correct the occasional mistake in game so they're worth adding before you start a new game but don't worry about it if you've already started one uh, but they're edited data files so you place them in the edited data folder which isn't available in early access or what well, is if you create it but it doesn't do anything uh, and this video isn't about edited data files so we'll check that one out in the how to install databases tutorial which will be released once the game is fully released if you're struggling with where to install these fmf files um, as we've said that's only available and possible once the full game has been released. Uh, so now we are ready to go back into game and do the final few steps to get all of these kits installed. So we need to head back into the preferences menu within the game and once again select advanced options. Uh, make sure all is selected in the drop down and scroll down to the section called skin. Uh, we need to ensure that use caching to decrease page loading times is switched off and uh, that reload skin when confirming changes in preferences is switched on. Uh, you then need to hit confirm and basically wait for all of these kits or any other graphics if you've loaded more things than at once to load back into the game. Uh, so depending on what you've changed, it could take a little while, it could be instant, it could take forever, uh, but hopefully not. Uh, if you notice, it, you shouldn't notice any noticeable impact on your loading times going forward, but if you are experiencing a bit of a slowdown, uh, go back into the preferences and re-tick uh, the use caching option because um, that'll make basically the game won't load things in every time. Um, but you'll have to switch that back off and back on again and off and on again if you're installing graphics so the game basically has to load them in rather than looking in the cache that basically after all that should now have all loaded successfully and we'll have real club kits for each team and league that you've downloaded in both 2d and 3d and standard if you've chosen to do so uh, so as mentioned the list of kit packs uh, will continue to grow throughout throughout the year some packs will also get updated so it's worth checking back every now and then and uh, downloading new leagues if you start a new save in a new nation for example uh, the install store process will stay the same and if you set up a decent folder structure like i've shown you it will be nice and easy to manage all of the installing of new leagues and updating existing packs so probably best to do that up in advance uh, make sure you double check your preferences menu once you do install new packs to ensure the right boxes are ticked and the changes should flow through as before so now we're all installed it's time to go through our last roundup of some troubleshooting tips. Uh, I've tried my best to include some as we've been going along, but there are a couple more to cover here as well. Uh, and as you will have seen, the process isn't particularly complex. can get a little bit fiddly, though. And if something does go wrong, it's difficult to unpick where and when things have fallen over. Because the end result it either works or it doesn't. But manager doesn't give you an error message to easily rectify an issue. But there are some common tips that we've covered throughout the video. If you don't have immediate success, we've got a few more as well. So make sure you followed all the instructions and not accidentally skipped a step. Sounds silly, but going through the process a second time will magically fix most issues, uh, especially if you've gone away halfway through and come back once the download's finished, maybe missed a step along the way. Make sure that you've turned caching off and set the skin to reload in the in-game preferences menu. Uh, make sure you've waited for the full download and ensure that you've extracted the whole uh, file that's been downloaded. It won't work if you put an incomplete download or half a folder that you're halfway through extracting, or even the zip or raw files just directly into the graphics folder. That won't work. The game needs the files and the config file to be able to know where to look and where to put them. Uh, as we've said, make sure the config file is with all of the pictures in the correct folders to know where the game is going to look for things. If you're using a custom skin and having issues, I'd recommend double checking that they aren't driven by the skin by testing out with a default skin. Usually if there's any known issues, the skin creator will either have fixed them already in a further version of the skin, or will have a workaround that you need to follow specifically for that skin. It's very rare, but worth considering. Now, hopefully you've successfully installed all of the kits that you want for FM24, at least at this stage. Let us know in the comments if you are successful. Tell me that you've installed all your kits. If you found anything difficult, highlight as well. We'll try and help as best we can, but sometimes it's difficult to answer questions in the YouTube comments, so if we can't get you a good answer straight away, I'd recommend going to the forum as well, because there's loads of people there who will have gone through similar problems and be able to fix it really quickly for you. Uh, as always, we've got loads of install guides coming and already out for Football Manager 2024. All of the essentials will be covered, so give us time to get new videos out. There are also the videos from last year as well, which will be very, very similar to the process you need to go through. Um, also, there's going to be a screen... Uh, a 
playlist on screen with those essentials, plus a playlist for all our league guides. Uh, we've created about 20 so far through FM23. We're going to try and cover every other league in FM24 throughout this game cycle. So by the end of FM24, all playable leagues should be covered in our league guide series. Uh, they provide a great overview of the playable leagues and give you some great save ideas if you're not sure on who to manage or where to manage in your next save game. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you've got your kits installed and I will see you on the next video. Thanks a lot.